Hello, I'm Atubo George. Now, bless God for a new week. Now, I pray that the Spirit of God will guide you throughout this week and bring you into the place of truth where He has ordained for you. Praise God. I pray that you find favor every day of this week in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise God. Now, last week, we've been talking all year actually about the knowledge of God and last week we began to talk about the attitude or attitudes that enhances your knowledge of God what are the things that I'm supposed to do on my own end see God wants to reveal himself to you Jesus wants you to know him but are there things that I need to do you know apart from asking for the first step is to ask but you see when you ask and I want you to remember something all these things I was listening out to you, remember this and never take this away from it. It is God that is at work in us, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Now, if God is at work in you, now what I was showing you last week from 2 Peter um, chapter 1 from verse 5, all those attitudes, all those things he's saying, add and add and add and add. Now, it's not the physical label. See? Now, if you are working with the Lord, these are the things you will find yourself gravitating towards. Now, when someone is speaking from the place of knowledge, see, when, when someone is speaking because God has revealed himself to him, I can assure you of one thing. You will find these things in his life. Why? Because that's the part of the Holy Spirit. That's the way he works. There are certain things, there are certain environments that the Holy Spirit cannot stay. For example, the Bible says where there's envy and strife, there's confusion and every evil work. Now that is truth. The Holy Spirit can never dwell in the environment of strife. It doesn't matter what you think. Listen, if you are praying with strife in your heart, and you hear a voice telling you, my son, don't mind them. I am with you. I can assure you one thing. That's not the voice of God. And you know what? That voice is going to lead you astray. You say, but, but what if they, they are the ones cheating me? Listen, you know, that, that, that's what I'm trying to talk to you about these things. You need to know God. You need to know how he thinks. You need to know his ways. You need to know certain things that God will never do. Because... You see, the Bible says even Satan has transformed himself like an angel of light. Now, it means he would speak to you. Now, if you've been hearing the voice of God, you know the voice of God, and then you've heard the voice of the devil, you will know one thing, no matter how matured you are in the voice of God, it is the character of the voice and the words that you will use to differentiate the two, not the hearing of it. I'm telling you the truth. Because sometimes the hearing of it may seem alike. But it is the character. And the only way you will understand that character is when you are in real fellowship with him. So you just like, uh, uh. You know, there, there are some things someone will tell you. A friend of yours will tell you. Or your, your boss or your superior will tell you. And then you look at them again and say, I didn't time to tempt you. You understand what I'm saying? Because, you know, on a normal day, this person will not tell me to do this. So like, why are you telling me to do this? Are you trying to tempt me? Why? Because of fellowship. You know the character of your relationship with this person. You know that this person would not on a normal day say this thing. You understand what I'm talking about? You know, for example, you know, when, when your boss, you know your boss, and then you greet your boss, good morning, sir. And then your boss said, good morning, sir. You just know that, ho, oh, oh, ho, there's trouble. <laughs> it seems there's fire on the mountain today. You understand what I'm saying? Just a greeting. Why? Because you know it's not in his character to call you sir. You understand what I'm saying? So it's the same thing how you judge the voice that you hear. It's the character that differentiates the voice of God from the voice of the devil. Not necessarily the hearing. There are many people who are blessed, who are anointed, who have been led astray because they heard a voice. See? And he said, but, but, but the Lord spoke to me. Now, you that understand God, when you hear the content of what they say God said to them, you'll be like, are, are you sure it was God that spoke to you? He said, I heard a voice. 
It's not about hearing a voice. That's why it's not about, oh, God, speak to me. You know, sometimes people can, Jesus, I want you to just appear to me. I want you to just appear to me. That's never your problem. Your problem has never been for Jesus to appear to you. Your problem has been to know him. And him appearing to you doesn't mean you will know him. Knowing him is not, will not take one appearance. I'm telling you the truth. It won't take one appearance. It won't even take several appearances. It will take a consistent fellowship. Retaining his word in your mind. Re- did you hear that? Retaining his word in your mind. Meaning, you know, you're getting to understand how God talks. You're getting to understand how God um, feels. Now, because you study his word, you see his relationship with Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and the rest of the, the people God walked with in scriptures. You see it. There's a consistency you will find. And then, now you're being introduced to knowing God. See, now when you get to know him, then you begin to know that, oh, okay, no, I don't think God will say this. This is not God. I, I don't know. No, no, that's not God that said it. I remember several years ago, I was praying somewhere, you know. Um, it, was, it was by a river, a dam. Several years ago, I was praying at a dam. Now I love the place because of the noise of the water. You know, sometimes, you know, several years ago, sometimes you just want to pray in a place where you can shout, you can scream, you know, no restriction, no, no neighbor is coming around and say, what's going on? You, you, you just want to enjoy the presence of God. You know, I, I, I used to go to such places. And then I remember that day I was just praying and then the anointing of God was so strong upon me. It, I mean, it was thick. It was strong. I felt like floating. I'm telling you the truth. You get to that point. And then in, that, in the midst of that, I heard a voice. And I heard that voice say to me, Hey, do you know you can jump down into this dam right now? Nothing is going to happen to you. Now, the moment I heard that voice, I stepped back. Because I was looking at the waters. I stepped back. And I knew immediately that that's not the voice of God. Say, so how did you know? I heard a voice. So how did you know that was not the voice of God? Because that's not the character of the Spirit of God. He's not going to tempt me like that. You know what I'm saying? And rather, do I, would I need to tempt him? Remember, G- you, know, you know, that was the day I realized when the devil spoke to Jesus about jumping from the pinnacle. I realized it first time. I'm like, that was real. I understand it now. Praise God. But you see, if I didn't know the character of the Lord, I mean, I would have just said, oh, that's true, Lord. I received that rhema and then jumped. And many people have died that way. And they'll tell you they had God. See? Thank you, Lord Jesus. We've got to stop here today. And I know this is going to be a beautiful week. So follow every word and every day as we share. And God bless you. Bye-bye.